Our phones have fairly exploded with people who want to talk about the spiritual aspect of the assassination attempts on Trump's life, uh, whether or not you agree with me that we are in the middle of a spiritual battle for the nation's soul. I believe that with all of my heart. We can't be afraid to lean into our faith. We can't be reluctant to talk about prayer and God and our beliefs. I have a very, very dear dear friend in my life, somebody who means an awful lot to me, uh, maybe one of the most important people in, in my, uh, certainly in my work circles, uh, whose father is about to pass away. And my heart goes out to him and his family. I'm praying for the, the, the peaceful um, passing of his dad. He's had a long life, but it's so hard to go through this. And you know how you get through it is with prayer and with faith and with, with embracing our spiritual beliefs. Um, it, it has gotten me through real tough times. And we're, we, we, we're turning away from that. We're turning away from this. A lot of text messages today uh, talking about the spiritual aspect of the assassination attempts uh, on Trump's life. Uh, here's Greg from Chicago. Mike, you are not ro- you are not wrong. With the two failed assassination attempts, God is not done with President Trump and will protect him to fulfill God's plan. Delaware, Mike, it's unbelievable to me that anyone could hate Trump to the point that he or she would give up on their country and their freedom. Do people realize what's at stake in this great country? We're so close to becoming a country that we won't recognize. I'm amazed at the people who can't get through this through their heads. Well, we've still got a few weeks to go. And there are a lot of tools that can help you sort things out. I just finished a movie called Vindicating Trump that is so good, that is so spot on, that points out the character assassination, the literal, the political assassination, the assassination attempts. Um, Dinesh D'Souza has had a prominent career as a writer, scholar, public intellectual. You've seen his movies. You've read his books. You've listened and followed his podcast, which is one of the best in the business. And this one, uh, you, 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 you outdid yourself with vindicating Trump, Dinesh. Congratulations. Welcome back to the show. How have you been? Uh, I've been great. Uh, I've been working hard. I'm very excited about this new film. Opens this weekend in 850 theaters nationwide. Uh, I think you'll agree, Mike, having seen it, it is a, it's a very entertaining film. It has uh, really great uh, recreations that will get people fired up. But the centerpiece of it is a one-on-one conversation with Trump. This was done after the assassination attempt. And Trump, I think, is in a particularly engaging and, uh, well, in the conversation, I wanted to show people the tumblers of his mind as it works and also a window into his soul. And I think that brings out a dimension of Trump that Trump himself is normally reluctant to put on public display. He has a kind of manly resistance to showing feelings or vulnerability. And some of the discussion you've been having about the spiritual dimensions here, uh, I, that's a question I put directly to Trump. Do you believe that you are in some ways an instrument of providence? And are these assassination attempts a, a kind of a pointer, an indication, a clue of that? And, and he says, in effect, yes. Everybody needs to see this movie. And again, as Dinesh says, it opens this weekend uh, in theaters everywhere, Vindicating Trump. And it's in uh, true Dinesh D'Souza style. I mean, it is entertaining. It's easy to watch. It's compelling. It's provocative. uh, It's important. I want to get I want to get back to the movie here in just a moment. But before we talk about the mechanics of Vindicating Trump, can I can I just ask you to share your your thoughts about what what many of us feel is a spiritual battle that we're witnessing right now. I mean, I talked to a guy yesterday in the supermarket. He had a T-shirt on, waiting for his return, and a picture of Trump. And we he, he he expressed to me his concerns about election integrity. He expressed his concerns about the future of the country. But he also talked about God having his hand in all of this. From your perspective, Dinesh, uh, are, are we in the middle of a spiritual war? Yes, the the greatest of our presidents from Washington to Lincoln to Reagan believed that America was a providential country. 
And what that means is that the future of America and of the American system, our constitutional re republic, but also the American dream, this is part of a, uh, not just a moral, but I would say a spiritual struggle. I want to frontally address some of these anxieties about Trump's character that are sometimes articulated even on the Republican side. I hear people who will say things to me like, well, I don't really like the guy, but you know, I like his policies or uh, he needs to shut his mouth, uh, or he used to be a playboy. And, and my answer to all this is that let's look at Trump's character in the round, meaning look at not only his vices, but also his virtues. All right, the guy used to be a playboy. No one's claiming that he's a playboy now. He's at the, at the worst, you can say, a reformed playboy. Uh, yeah, he is egotistical in a certain way in public. He loves the large rallies. He loves the, the, the numbers and so on. But he's actually not egotistical in private. And I try to bring that private dimension of him out in the film. What about Trump's virtues? He's magnanimous. He takes wonderful care of his family. He's not the kind of billionaire who secedes away from the middle class. He can relate to the ordinary guy. He's exceptionally kind. Most importantly, he is unbelievably brave. And I say this not simply in, in his reaction to the two assassination attempts, which is unique. No one else would react in those ways. But moreover, look at the way he's endured 91 criminal charges. Any other Republican facing two criminal charges would have long exited the field and fled from the scene. So Trump is a man of, of unnatural um, uh, daring. Uh, and courage. And Aristotle says that courage is the greatest of all the virtues, not only great in itself, but also great because it enables you to have the strength to do all the other virtues. Dinesh, I've been thinking about what it must feel like to be standing at a podium at an outdoor rally. And you and I have both stood in front of podiums all, all of our careers. We know what that's like to give a speech, to, to be in front of a group of people. I, I often think what how I would respond if I'm standing at a podium in an outdoor rally, I hear gunshots ring out, I hear I feel pain in my uh, on the side of my head, I go down, and then as I'm on the ground, I can feel the blood streaming down the side of my face. The last thing I'd be doing is standing up because I'm not brave. I'm not heroic. I'm not strong. The last thing I do is stand up and put my fist in the air and tell the crowd, fight, 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 as I'm being escorted off the stage. They're going to have to carry me out of there in a body bag, even if I'm not dead. I mean, I, there's, how how few of us would have the wherewithal, or as you put it, you, you call it courage, I say guts, to stand up and react the way Trump reacted. It's spoke volumes of who he is. Volumes. And, and the other thing is we should think about these moments and reflect on what they mean, because it's quite common. People will say to me things like, you know, Trump is fearless. Now, that's in a way somewhat misleading. Uh, in fact, I mentioned Aristotle a moment ago. Aristotle says that courage is not fearlessness. It's not having no fear. In fact, Aristotle says that the guy who has no fear is the reckless man, the guy who jumps off a cliff and doesn't know if there are rocks below. That's the fearless guy. So what Aristotle right. says, on one extreme, you have fearlessness. On the other side, you have cowardice. The courageous man is fearful. He does recognize the danger, but he pushes ahead nevertheless because of some great cause that he is attached to, some belief that he has. So I think this is really what Trump is all about. He's putting everything on the line for the country. And I think you and I, this is the broader point. If we were billionaires, we have Mar-a-Lago. So on the one hand, we have this kind of wonderful life available to us, life with our grandchildren and so on. On the other hand, criminal charges, people who want to lock you up for life, people who are trying to put bullets in you and maybe the second one was not the last one, and yet you forge ahead. I mean, this is a guy who must be doing it, can only be doing it for the country, for a higher cause, for a sense of belief that he has been called to do this. We're visiting with Dinesh D'Souza. Uh, he, uh, his new film, Vindicating Trump, opens in theaters everywhere this weekend. Starts tomorrow. You can go to vindicatingtrump.com if you want to order tickets in advance. And let's have a great opening weekend because we, we've got to support filmmakers like Dinesh. 
Uh, these are people who are uh, such an, Dinesh is such an important part uh, of our message of what this country is trying to become. Again, make America great again, vindicatingtrump.com to order your tickets. Uh, real quick question about the mechanics of this film. As a typical Dinesh D'Souza fashion, it is so well done and so expertly made. How in the world did you turn this around this quickly? I mean, I, I, I thought I had some knowledge of the movie-making business, and you and I, I toured the country with you years ago. I mean, you've had such success with Obama's America and America Imagine the World Without Her, about Hillary, Hillary's America. How did you get this most recent information incorporated into your film and it's and it's so well done so quickly well to be honest mike we did some recreations as you know in the film there's a sort of a dnc or democratic national committee war room there's a media war room there's a kind of police state or intelligence agencies war room and we anticipated some of the things that would come in the future, including the potential of an assassination attempt. We shot that before it actually happened, believe it or not. Uh, wow. We were going to interview wow. Trump a couple of months ago, and almost providentially it fell through because the actual interview with Trump was very recent, done after the assassination attempt, includes his reflections on that in a very unique way. And so at the last minute, we parachuted the Trump interview into the film, and that's why the film has this feeling like I completed it yesterday. It, it's wrenched right out of the headlines uh, and it's a film, I think, that could have a massive impact. So people don't often realize that if you see a film in opening weekend, it's worth like 10 times seeing it the following week because it sends an electric current through Hollywood. We get more theaters next week. So if you can possibly see it this weekend, and if you go to vindicatingtrump.com, you can plug in your zip code or your city, your town, boom, the theaters will come up and you can uh, round up the friends and family. And, and please go this weekend if you can. Congratulations, Dinesh D'Souza, on another great work vindicating Trump, and I hope you have a huge weekend. Keep fighting the good fight, my friend. Thank you.